Hello everybody, welcome back for another light novel review. I am Justice Star Stone and today I am talking about volume number three in Shinin Kanzaki's light novel series, Black Bullet. In this book, a massive gastria, which if you haven't, don't know what a gastria is, go read books one and two. Anyway, big monster, gastria, Aldebaran is what it's been codenamed, attacks one of the monoliths that is made of the metal that is supposed to repulse Gastria, and it basically spews a whole bunch of acid on top of this thing that has the ability to basically eat away at the metal and destroy it. And so now Tokyo area is faced with a crisis because this one of the monoliths is now basically crumbling, and they sort of estimate how long it's going to take for the monolith to be destroyed and how long it would take them to build a replacement. And they realize there's a gap of a couple of days. And so they mobilize not only the military, but also a joint function with the civic officers. Of course, Rentaro having saved the head of state in the last volume and having destroyed a massive gastria in the first volume is one of the first ones to be called up to serve. And... So basically, this is all about that preparation of the great battle that is about to come, where they need to try and hold off thousands of gastria that are starting to form around the base of this crumbling monolith, and basically hold them off for a couple of days in the hopes that they can replace it and save all the people in the Tokyo area. Unlike volumes one and two, which were each sort of contained stories, this one is actually a two-parter. So the story that starts in this volume concludes in the next one, volume number four. And that's also where the anime concluded. So the volumes after that, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing because they're going to be a story I'm not at all familiar with. This one... I kind of liked how this one worked, that there was a little bit better pacing to it because I think he felt less rushed because he knew that it was going to be a bigger story. And there's a little bit more room that some of the newer characters that we meet or that characters that we haven't seen as much of get some really kind of cool character moments. There is sufficient enough action to keep the book moving in a, a really good sort of forward motion. But at the same time, he does allow to take some moments that are just quiet and sort of allow characters to have honest-to-goodness conversations. There's a few things that are sort of thrown in here that expand the mystery of how the world ended up this way. Uh, they give, I, I wouldn't say it's a partial answer, but definitely there's sort of some breadcrumbs being left in terms of teasing us with this whole idea of how the world ended up this way, how the gastria came to be. So overall, like, I would probably say that this is one of my favorite volumes so far of Black Bullet. Um, even though there are sort of the, the lolly harem moments and there is a bit of a battle between, like, there, I mean, it's a spoiler, but there's a very cliche, like, if you want me to work with you, you have to beat me kind of moment, which... I was like, really, dude, like that, like, that's a thing, really, when the world's facing extermination, that's, that's what you come up with. But again, it is an anime trope. And I think, too, that because most of the story is build up and because there aren't as many action bits, I think that was kind of just thrown in so that we could have a good fight scene. This is the overarching issue that I have with Black Bullet. When we're talking about the world, when he's talking about society and how society is blaming the cursed children for what's about to happen and treating them as a scapegoat and taking their anger and frustration out and we see this level of racism and bigotry and we see it in the context too that from a point of view of characters that are like these kids are putting their lives on the line to save you and yet this is how you react to them like all those things are really good and the sort of different political push and pulls and how different factions don't get along with others like these elements are what I enjoy most about this series, and I think this series does pretty well. It's when the series has to devote itself to, well, we've got two big manly men, let's make them fight to prove that, you know, one of them can bleed the other one. And, oh, we've got cute girls, let's have them be all funny and have a pseudo-sexual type, you know, oh my 
God. Anyway, like when those things are thrown in, oh, let's talk, oh, the girl with big boobs. We got to mention her boobs a lot. Well, maybe not as much in this volume, which is maybe why I liked it a little bit better. But still, you know, like let's mention her boobs. Like when you, it's, that's, that's the problem with Black Bullet. There's a really good story in here, and most of the book is devoted to that story, and I really enjoyed it, but it's just, it's unfortunately, it feels almost like the author felt like he had to jam these little bits in there so that it would be more like a manga or anime of a certain stripe. I really wish he had just made the book stand out and just be a very dark action political thriller than throwing in all the silly bits that I really don't think add a lot to the book. So those are my thoughts on volume number three of Black Bullet. Again, a little bit of a mixed bag review, but uh, overall, you know what? I still like the series, obviously, enough that I'll probably finish it out, so eh, it can't be all bad. My next review is going to be on volume number seven of Sword Art Online. This one is a self-contained story, Mother's Rosary. That's the way they've chosen to... Translated on this, I mean, I guess that is the true English translation. However, you will most often see it res like referenced online as Mother's Rosario. If you're new to this channel, then click on subscribe either above my head or in the comments down below so you can check out all my future light novel reviews. I've also got links across the top to other videos as well as the books that I happen to write. Thanks very much for stopping by. I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, bye-bye for now.